Get ready for the kind of news that makes you smile. Get ready for something good. And welcome to Something Good. I'm Chris Gutierrez. And I'm Christine Noel. For the next hour, we'll look at some of the most amazing people doing some of the most amazing, uplifting, inspirational things that you can imagine. That's right. All seven Grand Media Group stations from around the country have produced meaningful stories about you, the people choosing to help other people. And that word help can mean so many different things. Help can be life saving, like it was for this baby in Detroit. And help can sometimes come by accident, like when memories are seemingly lost forever, but luck intervenes, restoring faith in some of life's most precious moments. And when it comes to help, there may not be a better example than our first story. A father took his son and daughter out on the St. John's River in Jacksonville for a day of swimming and fishing. Dad casting lines while the kids swam around the anchored boat. But when seven year old Chase's younger sister Abigail got caught in a current, Chase sprung into hero mode and chased after her without a life jacket. His heroic effort lasted more than an hour and his story instantly became legendary. How'd you get so good at being in the water and dealing with those kind of situations? I have no idea. Chase Pouse is only seven and he saved himself and his family on Friday night. Chase, his four year old sister Abigail and his dad went out on a boat to fish from Mandarin Point. Chase and Abigail swam by the boat while it was anchored. The current was so strong that my sister, she usually hangs out at the back of the boat and she let go. So I so I let go of the boat and I grabbed her. And then I was stuck. Stephen Pouse, the father, says he jumped out of the boat to save his kids. Pouse says he told Chase to swim to shore. I told them both I loved them because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And I tried to stick with her as long as I could and both of them really. I wore myself out and she drifted away from me. But Chase kept swimming to shore. Were you getting tired swimming? Oh yes, that's why I did dead. That's why I floated on my back. Chase says he didn't have a life jacket on, but Abigail did. And that's what kept her afloat when she drifted away from her dad. The seven year old made it to shore after an hour and knocked on a neighbor's door for help. And that help finally came when Florida Fish and Wildlife rescued the father and four year old in a boat. The Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department and the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office also helped in this rescue. We're here. By the grace of God, we're here. My mom had cancer at the time. So we were actually trying to purposely get here so she can get that medical attention. We walk through the border of Mexico for three days and three nights. Aurelita Prado moved to the United States from the Dominican Republic when she was seven years old. Sometimes we didn't have mon you know, money to eat food. And my mom did, she didn't have money to buy me clothes. Lucy Adame Clark faced similar struggles growing up at Alessandra Apache Courts. We had to get in line for food. We had to get in line for shoes. We had to get, you know, hand-me-down clothing. No matter what, both of their families kept them focused on the right path. Instilled in me at a young age, though, your life is not dependent on the situation that you're at right now. You can make something of yourself. You have the same opportunities. You just have to go and get it. Always be there. Don't ever forget where you come from. Now at 34, Aurelina is a senior manager for Boeing Airspace Company. And at 49, Lucy is the first ever woman elected as Bear County Clerk. Despite their important titles, they give back to their community. The two women joined together with a mission to serve young teen girls at Southside ISD. It was the first time that I knew that there were high school students in our area in a first world country 
that were homeless. With the help of other nonprofit organizations, the duo has been collecting and donating hundreds of prom dresses from all over the world to the school district since 2015. These dresses were valued at least three, four, five hundred dollars or more. They've given away about a thousand so far. The first time we did it, we had to like walk away because we had tears in our eyes. And then at the same time, we get to talk to them and just say, what do you want to do when you grow up? How can, how can we help you? Help us help you. And it, sometimes, you know, it's just that five minute mentoring. Their goal is to inspire these young women to not only feel like confident queens on a special night, but to push themselves to be their best. That word impossible is there because it is possible. The sky is no longer the limit, but only the beginning. Strapping on her fins and adjusting her oxygen tank, Lily Potts plunged into Clater Lake for water rescue training. Strapped to a line, Potts swam through the murky water and spotted something five feet away from the dock, a camera covered in algae. I picked it up, we brought it, we opened it up and the SD card was still in it. And um, I had a friend who then took it and cleaned it up. Despite the camera being submerged underwater for years, photos dating as far as 2006 were still intact. Oh my gosh, there's 300 pictures on this SD card. I was pretty amazed. After posting on Facebook, Potts finally found the owner, Brenda Dalton. Memories of date nights with her husband, her daughter's wedding, even the birth of her grandson were all restored. And to be able to have all these pictures and have someone do something so nice to find me, I was just, it, that you just have, the meaning is more than I can express in words. She remembers the devastating moment of losing her camera eight years ago. Oh, it's gone. It's just gone forever. <laughs> and it uh, is it forever. She dropped the camera on a fishing trip with her husband and grandson. Oh, it was horrid. Oh, I cried. I, I, I know I cried for an hour just thinking about all the pictures that were on and I'm crying now. Finding phones, wallets, tools and cameras all the time in the water. Technical rescue coordinator Bob Barnes offers some advice. If you've got a camera, um, take a picture with your contact information on it and that makes it a lot easier for us to get it back to you. Now, Brenda plans to create an album of her restored memories. Her name is Anna Pinnell and at 22 years old, she is living life like a rock star. Or make that a rap star. Paralyzed from the neck down in a car accident when she was only a year old. It's a ventilator and it connects to my trach and it helps me breathe. Being confined to a wheelchair is all she's ever known. Yet she is unbound by her zest for life. But to so many in public, she's often invisible. When I go in the stores, like some people, they just walk right in front of me without like you know like i'm not even there so she lays down some beats and it smooths over some of life's wrinkles and like any other normal young person she has big dreams and hers is being an actress and a rap star who just happens to be a quadriplegic and nonprofit d-man in berkeley understands and is working to make all of Anna's dreams come true. D-MAN stands for Danny's Miracle Angel Network. We're a nonprofit 501c3, and we got one mission, and our mission is to increase the quality of life for awesome people like Anna Panal. I love everything about this girl. I don't think I've ever seen her without a smile on her face. Can you lay down some tr some tracks for me real quick? Do, 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 Downtown do, jazz, do, do, all the boys stopping, driving in my jack. And so the prep work is on to shoot Anna's first rap video. D-Man has arranged an elaborate music video shoot for Anna's first professional music video. I think the sky's the limit for you, girl. To have somebody not, not, not only believe in you, but to have somebody give you something special like this, to give you that chance. I think that's very awesome. And I feel really blessed to be a part of D-Man. I'm 
always felt we had a rendezvous with destiny. For Mark Mitchell and Margarita Grio. Just joy and just happiness. Love found life. I'm thinking, my gosh, how did I, how did I grab this girl? This is amazing. <laughs> At 56 and 55 years old, they found the one. I think God was, was, was saving us for each other at the right time. Especially since... We were, we were both going into the sixth grade. She was literally the girl next door. We moved next door in 1976. At 11 and 12 years old. It was like, wow, when I saw him. I had a big, big crush on her. She'd look out secretly smitten. Their parents, neighbors, loved the pair. He'd help her with tennis and drive her and her sisters to school. But as life would have it, they grew up, got jobs, and lost touch. Well, almost. So fast forward 44 years. <laughs> Until quarantine. Life just came to a standstill. That's how it felt. In March, Margarita's work closed. Easter weekend last year. I texted him, and we texted for 12 hours. Love blossomed. At 1 o'clock, let's cut this off. 2 o'clock, let's cut this off. You know, just t saying this to myself, not to her, but 3 o'clock, you know, and then I just finally said, oh, to heck with it. We'll, you know, we'll just go all night. Love in the time of COVID. Texting and talking, and we would try to meet uh, always in his car. If it took a pandemic for this to happen, then my view <laughs> it was worth it. A month or so later, Mark proposed. So I've been waiting my whole life for this, and I feel so lucky that, you know, my moment or our moment has finally come. Now, 40-some years later. Well, I really feel like it's a miracle that God brought us together. These words. I love Mark. I really do. I think he is so cute. Still ring true. Do you like his can't get here soon enough as far as I'm concerned? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs>
incredibly special. Buckner really started to solidify his core military values. Values she hopes will help young cadets persevere. I hope that this really pushes that one cadet who's thinking, I don't know that this is for me. I don't know that I can do this. I don't know that I'm able to achieve this. I hope that Drew's personality resonates. It's a project three years in the making. This once vacant lot at Academy of Warren is now being turned into a state-of-the-art playground. It is a unique playground that the kids designed, actually. We had a designer day, and the kids created this whole drawing of what their ideal playground would be. So it's going to be a combination of swings, a dance area, and a playscape. This project was Oronde Kearney's idea. It comes with a $500,000 price tag. The school's old playground, let's just say, wasn't up to par. We had a terrible fence and just a swing area where it was not safe at all. It was no grass area. It was just rocks and gravel. It was pretty messed up. The swings kept creaking, the slides, it was kind of turning when you went down. The playground will be open in the fall. Unfortunately, the current eighth graders won't get to fully enjoy it, but still, they're all excited to see this idea become reality. Greatest thing ever. You know, the key thing when they say you're giving back, so this is a true moment of giving back to my students, the community, all of the above. So imagine here we're, we're talking and I drop my cell phone and Colton has been trained to help me out when I'm mobility challenged to bring me any item that I drop. Timothy Stroud has been working with Colton the service dog for about five years now. Colton is trained to pick up any item, bring it to its owner, and is also there for emotional support. You guys are good boy. You are. When somebody's stress is at a nine or a ten, just being around Colton, boom. It's going to lower to like a three or a four. Colton is part of a program through the Easter Seals of Greater Houston. There are 13 different programs designed to help veterans in need. One of them is their service dog initiative. We train up two service dogs per year and we take care of all the medical and all of the training and we gift it to a veteran that it, where it's going to bless their lives. Stroud says service dogs will help veterans push through any setbacks or failures in life. That means less medication and less stress and more happiness. And you see the smiles on the people's faces, not only the veteran, but their family members to where they can take that step and they can get back on their road to recovery. <music> My advice is for everyone to take some time once a year, maybe more than that, to be perfectly honest, I would say like quarterly to Maria condo their condiments. My best advice is as, as fast as possible in your life. And even if it's later in your life, but man, like fight for the time to bring your passion to life. Advice I wish I had taken to heart sooner is to say, I don't know more often. <laughs> And my advice is to say the nice thing. The idea is that every time you think something nice about someone, you should tell them. Got a great piece of advice, which is whenever you get an invitation for anything that's more than like 48 hours away, you ask yourself, would I do it tomorrow? Not would I do it in a hypothetical tomorrow. Look at your actual schedule for tomorrow and be like, if I realized I had to do this tomorrow, would I want to do it? My advice is when listening to music, always check the liner notes. My first piece of advice is mainly for dog owners or otherwise dog adjacent people uh, who are prone to melancholy. And the advice is to occasionally feed your dog a berry. I would say my advice would be very simple, which is never be annoying. Listen to the best advice show for free wherever you find your podcasts. This really all happened after Paps 
Brewing Company moved their headquarters from Los Angeles all the way back to San Antonio again. And really, artists had about a month and a half to pull this all together. So now they're ready to debut 10 murals. The purpose of all of this is to connect creative neighborhoods and provide the community with different forms of street art and perhaps the most important part, get artists working and paid once again. It can be used to uplift communities. We can use more contemporary street art to add some more flavor to different neighborhoods. It's just, it's important to have that here. We're an art city. We're the seventh largest city in the U.S. Let's take pride in it. Let's act like that. And Sheck tells me there's still much more art to come. So San Antonio can snag that title as the largest outdoor gallery in Texas. It's a case of the memorial multiple multiples. All of these graduating seniors are triplets. I knew there were other sets of triplets, but I didn't know there was this many. 45 students in the graduating class here at Memorial High School are either a triplet or a twin. It wasn't until administrators were putting the graduation ceremony together that they realized these halls and the senior class were so sibling strong. It's hard to believe you have that many sets of twins and it's hard to get to know every single one of them. But for the most part, I've gotten to know most of the kids um, and you kind of see the different personalities in all the different sets. This set, the Bethencourts. So you guys do not want to separate. Mm, yeah, no, not, not really. really. Are all headed to Texas A&M. Because we're all going to A&M, it's like just the beginning of another four years. But the Ellies, they're going their separate ways. We talked a lot about it and it's going to be definitely different for us because we've been together our whole lives. But we're definitely going to FaceTime, like with technology, it's going to be fine. Seth Garcia is ready for some space. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to leave the house and do my own thing. Not pictured here, the 18 sets of twins that Friday will don their caps and gowns and join these triplets for a graduation ceremony that will also be a family affair. Go A Nocatee style welcome wagon like no other. A humble hero in his family honor. The official start of a dream becoming a reality. I, I don't deserve this. I, mean, I just did a job I loved and believed in, and it was just overwhelming. Retired Staff Sergeant Jerry Majedic was burned over a third of his body after the vehicle he was in was hit by an IED in Iraq. That's not all. I'd been shot four times. I was shot once in the right shoulder and three times in the right leg. And then I spent the next uh, 22 months in and out of the hospital. He's had more than 80 surgeries. His wife, Mariella. We knew that we needed enough patients for our home. But I think that for us, the biggest thing is that we're going to be able to keep pulling back and reaching, you know, pulling forward to help other people who have, you know, been in similar situations. As the Majetics found out, they're in a good company. Their new neighbor, retired Navy Commander Michael Dionian, made it official. Jerry Mariola, on behalf of Delaware and Knox community, we're so happy to welcome you home. Anybody that serves in combat um, has injuries that you can't see, you know, as well. And I think it'll be uh, good for, uh, you know, Jerry will have somebody he can relate to. What message do you have for people who are in your situation, who may think about giving up? This is a light at the end of the tunnel. Keep your head down and keep going forward. Tomorrow's another day, always. Great. Great. You know, might have a bad day, I tell her, and I, I, I try and live by the words. Every day is a good day. Two young people walking across the Pyramore and Holden Heights Kids Zone graduation stage. It feel like a chapter that you just been waiting to 
clothes and now it's finally here and it's just like finally it feels good to graduate because on the first of uh, my generation to graduate me i have mixed emotions but i'm mostly very excited that i will be finally going into my career so i'm happy it's kind of a bittersweet. The Paramore Kids Zone started in 2006 to help young people get involved and graduate high school. The city explained the program has reduced juvenile crime and teen pregnancy rates and has been so successful it's now expanding it to neighborhoods like Holden Heights, Mercy Drive, and Inglewood. We believe that if we do whatever it takes, our children will be safe, our children will be healthy, our children will be happy, and our children will be whole knowing that they have a safe haven. Graduates say this program changed their lives and encouraged others to get involved. If I wasn't as interested in school, they helped me in the places I lacked, like grades, just like a support system that kept me going. Z, like they always was in the back of my ears telling me like, you know, you have a purpose. It's like a reason for you to like finish school. It's checkup day at Children's Hospital for Benjamin McClendon. The staff has a special nickname for Benjamin because he so quickly outgrew their infant beds. They had to create a bed just for him, and they gave him the name Big Ben. Big Ben was diagnosed before birth with complex heart problems. When he was born, doctors discovered he would need a heart transplant. Benjamin's condition was very critical. We weren't sure in the beginning if he would survive the long wait. Benjamin spent three months on the transplant list, a difficult time for his mother, father, and big sister. It was very tough, not knowing what the day will, you know, what will happen if I leave Benjamin there. I didn't want to go home. But we always say every day is a victory. Every day was a victory no matter what. When the call finally came, their first thought was of the donor's family. We prayed. Uh, we prayed for the family. Um, we pray for comfort, we pray for healing, and we just pray that one day maybe we can connect together. Big Ben is now thriving. As you see, he's a bundle of joy and a lot of energy, which is a blessing. It's a gift, and um, you know, and, 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 and their child gets to live you know, longer because of that gift. Um, but even for our donor families, you know, their child or their loved one gets a little bit longer and somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are no words to describe this invaluable gift, especially in the middle of a tragedy like that. I think about them all the time. Ah! I see Benjamin, and when he's smiling, and just I just think about him. And um, I pray for him every day. As Benjamin's family prepares to celebrate Mother's Day, they have a special tribute planned. We're actually going to plant um, some flowers for the family um, that decided to donate their <laughs> It made me hurt that so Benjamin can live. And so I just want to tell the family, thank you. And he's going to, and Benjamin's going to do some big and great things. And we're just truly grateful and blessed. And this is a, a, a Mother's Day that we'll always, we always remember. I'm just checking just to make sure that they're okay. Raul Pineda has many passions. This one should have uh, some honey ready to go. Beekeeper is one, yet teaching right there. is the queen of them all. The honeycomb's got a 22 degree tilt to it so the honey doesn't fall out. The two became one, one day in April when Pineda subbed for a day at Heritage Elementary School in Deer Park. The principal pulls me aside and says, hey, I have to tell you something, um, you know, so you know what you're walking into. Um, she said the fourth grade teacher has passed away. Brian Fournier was 56, taught for decades, lived to do the dance and make you chuckle while he taught. If we had an angle question on homework, you'd be like, go to the corner because it's 90 degrees because it had the turning. And I love that joke. Meet Brian Barnett. Just think about him a lot and Callie Norton, Mr. Fournier's students. It was really hard for us because, because of how he made an impact in our life. I thought about how uh, their teacher, Mr. Fournier, 
um, had shared things with him. To me, that was that was the pollen, that was the nectar that he was bringing back. Today, Mr. Pineda came back to Mr. Fournier's class, this time gifting students a jar of honey, jarred from the hive now named after Mr. Fournier. A third of the uh, of the food on your plate has to be pollinated by bees. Life lessens that nectar still pouring. Sometimes you just don't know why stuff like that has to happen. But it's, it's part of life, so it did happen. Do you care about the water you drink like I do? This vibrant 12-year-old is Sofia Ramirez. Texas aquifers supply 60% of all water used in Texas. And this is a PSA she made for an environmental campaign contest called Take Care of Texas. She won first place out of 200 participants. How did that feel to you? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know her and I know she has this personality. I just didn't expect it to all come together the way it did. Mm. And so she really kind of wowed me. A study showed that over 10 million Texans consumed weed killer in their drinking water. And with humor. Please don't make me drink this. But this is just a part of Sophia's ambitious story. She generally has always had this magnetism that just draws people in, especially this daddy. Sophia loves to volunteer, draw, and read. I can memorize entire <laughs> chapters of a book, but forget what I had for dinner last night. <laughs> and she loves performing, storytelling, and script writing. I always like trying my best in things that, I'm, that I like doing. Not to mention she's bilingual and can play piano. All of which are skills she says helped make her Take Care of Texas project a success. Take Care of Texas! It's the only one we've got! Leading the response to an unprecedented pandemic is no easy task. It was about April when I started telling people we need to prepare to do this for the next year. Even for Robert Forsman, who's devoted his life to emergency management, his role has been critical to getting the Roanoke Valley back on its feet, something he almost never got to see. And that's where I lay. One year ago, a heart attack left Forsman dead in his own front yard until Rockbridge County Deputy Daniel Trout showed up, performed CPR, and saved his life. I just, I can't ever thank them enough because I truly feel like I've gotten a, a second chance at life. Something Forsman has taken full advantage of with a newfound purpose in his work at the health department during a time of so much uncertainty. He's now promoting heart health, advocating for the American Heart Association, and getting back to broadcasting football games at Rockbridge County High School. His near-death experience has also changed his perspective, realizing what really matters. Whatever message I'm supposed to take out there, I'm the vessel, and if it saves one or whatever, I'm going to do it. coming from the apparatus room. I just want to give a shout out to Tony Rocco for supporting restaurants like us during this difficult time. And he's selling multiple paintings at multiple restaurants like the one behind me, and they will go back to us through his industry relief fund. So this is all a part of the restaurant relief program. Um, over the last year, the restaurant industry has been shut down uh, with the exception of carryouts. And so many of my loved ones, friends are, are both either proprietors in, 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 the, in the industry or, or work directly in the industry. So this is sort of a program to um, raise funds and awareness uh, for them, as well as uh, for our art programming, which is uh, the 501c3 we have, that's the Art Foundation. So um, I'm just trying to come up with sort of concepts that illustrate the hard work and devotion of uh, the industry workers and the challenges that they've had over the last year. The opportunity 
get to feature some of Tony's art you see behind me here. Um, and then, you know, kind of add to the ambiance decor of the restaurant, a little freshen up for us. I love a nice new art piece, but also knowing that it gives us an opportunity to help provide some support in the restaurant industry is super exciting. We're really humbled to be part of it. Yeah, I think it's important to, you know, surround yourself with positive people that are, are trying to do positive things in the world. Um, and I have an opportunity to use my art as a catalyst for that. And um, I don't take that lightly. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to do that. The cheering staff at Health First says the man walking into the room was the hospital chain's first COVID patient and survivor. You remember me, I don't really remember you. Mark Twentyman was in a medically induced coma, so the 69-year-old says he can't remember his 29-day stay at Cape Canaveral Hospital or the staff he credits with saving his life. It's so nice to see you. So 13 months later, Mark returns to the hospital to thank his heroes. To see him here today, walking in and talking, is amazing. Since his recovery, he says he's received all his vaccines. My message is, if you have any reason for hesitating, uh, read my story if you can get a hold of it. Sharon, a regular shopper at this Meyer in Roseville, was picking up some groceries on Tuesday night. I just happened to look over and see a homeless guy walk into the store, realize that he didn't have any shoes on, only his socks that had holes in it. Roseville Police Chief Ryan Monroe tells me they got a call earlier of reports of a man wandering around the parking lot barefoot. Obviously needed some help, so our officers were dispatched there. What Sharon noticed after seeing the man in the checkout line is what made her post to Facebook. I noticed that behind him following was a Roseville officer who actually had bought him some shoes and snack. The sergeant took it upon himself to go inside Meyer and buy him a pair of shoes and some food for the evening and give him a, give him a ride to another location for a place to sleep for the night. Outside of the Meyer, Sharon snapped a few pictures of the officer helping the man in need and posted what she had just witnessed to social media. I just felt like that, that story needed to be shared with everything the way that the world is nowadays. We just need to show that there's still kindness and love out here. This house is basically bringing back a historic style house. Victor Van Lanker gets excited about blueprints. I do high ceilings, uh, open floor plans. And over the years, the designer has gotten pretty good at building this homes. Be, this house is really cute. Now he wants this to build is, uh, community. These plans are for the inner city of Daytona Beach. Van Lanker has his eyes set on lots like this one. The plan is to bring much needed housing stock to the lower income area. My son had showed me a video. It's Daytona. A video came up online. Check out the areas on the outside of Daytona and then look at the areas on the inside of Daytona. And the then particular people in the video felt like nobody wanted to help the inner city. Everybody says they want to, but nobody ever does. The filmmaker Jared Thompson says he's amazed at the documentary's reach and its impact. That is a beautiful thing to know that my film has reached somebody that's willing to, you know, um, invest in the infrastructure in Daytona Beach. Oh, is some of the Christmas presents sitting around the room. Van Lanker's entry into giving started years ago when he welcomed needy families into his home for the holidays. These were all families that weren't going to have a Christmas. He gave gifts, house. dinner, and a night on the town. The most gratifying thing, they wrote me letters, um, and it's just, it's, it's the most amazing thing I've ever done. When I saw it on TV, I was like, you know what? I know someone that needs to be recognized. Van Lanker was nominated for the News 6 Getting Results Award by his friend, Cliff Myers. Because that's what he is. He's, he's a good person. He's just, that's, that's his heart. That's Victor. That's just Victor. That's what he does for people. They 
will work for treats. There you go. Good job, buddy. Leave it. These canines are learning to follow commands. Good girl, yes. Get the keys. Including retrieving items like a phone or keys. Yes, good boy. Tug. Opening up doors. Good boy. And even melting hearts. Show us their bellies. They're part of the national nonprofit Paws for Purple Hearts, a service dog training organization. While these dogs are in training to become service dogs, they actually get to participate in our canine assisted warrior therapy program. And that's where warriors who are wounded or suffering from uh, things like PTSD get to come in and get the therapeutic benefits of working with the dogs. Warriors like active duty army soldier, George Rivera Valverde. Alan, tug. The Puerto Rican native ended up in San Antonio for medical needs. Every Tuesday I have a reason to get out of my room and go do something fun. Dogs like Alan impact the warriors while they train. And a lot of strong-minded veterans who don't want the help but understand that they need it. Um, and I feel like most of them would probably prefer an animal than a human, you know, doing things for them. The feeling was good. The energy was high. The mission was simple. Make a difference one car at a time. This will bless five people in my home. So it's, it's a huge bless. It's Clara White Mission's 28th annual miracle on Ashley Street. We lost a lot of our volunteers during COVID, so this is really kind of our coming out party um, again to the community and allowing people to be hands on and help. Finally, a message to the future helpers of the world. Never give up, always strive to do better and help others when you can. A whole new outlook. After a 14-month hiatus. I'm ready. I'm ready to go back. Like so many Americans, 27-year-old Colin Hazlip is returning to work. For the past 10 years, I've been working at Publix. On top of that, the last three years, Colin also worked as an office assistant at One to One Financial Credit Union. But along came the COVID-19 pandemic, which would keep Colin away from the office for more than a year. It's been a while since I've been back to one to one, but um, I, they're my family, they're my community, and I need to, um, it, I, lo I love walking down there, it gives me a chance to see everybody again. Fully vaccinated, Colin has returned to work. I'll be working at the Jumbo Shrimp baseball games. You're going to be a busy man. You have no idea. Money does not grow on trees. Back on the clock as the credit union's brand ambassador. This is this is all new to me. Colin was asked to throw the first pitch. Please welcome Colin A round of applause, not only for his work on the diamond, but also in his community. Well, I'm trying really hard to encourage everyone to step outside their comfort zone. Call to do a Zoom meeting with the principal, PE and driver's ed teacher Allison Gray was a little nervous. Honestly, I thought I might be in trouble. No adult, even no, no matter how old you are, likes being called to the principal's office. But instead of hearing a lecture, Gray heard the words of a student who nominated her for the Cox Education Hero Award. Honestly, it just I'm just speechless. I couldn't be more thankful for my kids. I it means more to me than they'll ever know. Back in December, she created winter care packages, not just for students in need, but as she calls them, her children. High school's hard enough as it is. I never want them to feel like they don't have something that they need that is a necessity. Gray will receive $1,000 to revamp her classroom, and she already has some ideas in mind. Lights, pictures, a lot of color, lamps. I want it to look like something they would hope their home would look like.